UFO Reporting Center. Hi. Have you heard about Missouri yet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What did you see? Oh, shit. Uh, the Air Force gave me your number. Whiteman Air Force Base, as a matter of fact, gave me your number. Okay. They hovered 300 feet from me and stared at me like I was a... Uh, a zebra in the zoo. Like I was a lion in a cage, you know? Uh, a, uh, an insect in a jar. Three craft. Directly overhead? Directly overhead. I saw their faces looking out the windows at me, man. Pointing at me with their fingers. We're not talking about one. We're talking about three crafts. I, I, there's nothing like this ever happened to me in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the shrouded a crowd of mist. And... I, my body wasn't able to move. I was not able to move. Just there, and they hovered about 300 feet from me, the closest one. What'd they look like? I mean, what'd the objects look like? Cigar shape. Were these large or small? Giant. I would say the size of a large jet airliner at a minimum. Okay? okay. But no wings or tails. Cigar shape. There was three of them flying in formation side by side. When they stopped over me, the closest one to me raised up so that the next one to him could lower down, so the next one to him could lower down, so that the rows of windows going down the side, all of the, be it however you want to phrase them, people, creatures, whatever, could all see me very plainly. So they looked at me and tilted and cocked their heads and pointed like I was an exhibition in a, in a zoo. What did those occupants look like? You couldn't tell. The light from inside the craft was so bright, shining out the windows, that all you could tell was all I could tell. I okay. said you could tell. All I could tell, I mean, I'm telling you right now, buddy, I'm, I, I'm saying you're not knowing what the hell to think. Heads were, were human-shaped. You could tell that there was eyes in the head. You could tell that the eyes were large. There was no visual appearances of hair or ears from what I could see. But the light was so bright, emanating from inside this craft that uh, they looked like they were bald with no ears, but, but there was no way to really tell. But they were definitely, it had a human head shape. They definitely had a human shaped body. They definitely stood behind these windows and pointed at me. And these crafts had, they, they, they looked like a jet airliner with no wings and tail, okay? On the back of them, they had pods that, that resembled the same kind of pods that would be on the back of like a 727 or something, okay? Okay. Except that they had a green glob of light that was mounted to the top of these pods. That it wasn't real bright, but it glowed. Then out of the back of these pods, where it would normally come on a jet like as we know it, where it would come the exhaust, was lights that were identical to the headlights of a car. That's what it really looked like, okay? That's what it looked like, was headlights of a car. They were shrouded in a crowd of mist. When they hovered in the air to stare at me, it was like I was on visual show at a zoo. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you could see these rows of windows going down the side, and they were identical, just virtually identical to the rows of windows that you would see on, a, on an airliner. And there was beings behind each one of these windows. They were looking at me and pointing. And I could have seen their faces and their features very clearly. It wouldn't have been for the fact that the light was so intensely bright in coming from inside the aircraft. They made no noise, absolutely none. They were no more. The closest one, the first one that raised up higher than the other two so that the other two could raise in stair steps so that the occupants in the windows could see me, was no more than 250, 300 feet from me. My body could not move. I wanted to scream for my girlfriend, my sister-in-law, my mother, and my brother, and the seven children that were in the house, come look too. I was not able to move. I tried to scream. The minute they ceased with looking at me, so to speak, and started to move off without making a sound, and there was no change in these lights that were shining out from behind them. They were just like headlights in fog, okay? Okay. And they were shrouded in mist. They started moving out across the lake at the 51 mile marker here in mid-Missouri. Brother and I jumped in my car then and drove to the top of the hill as these things were going over the lake and on their way out of sight. The sky is totally clear here. There's not a cloud in the sky to speak of. None, okay? These things were clear.
shrouded in, in, in a shroud of mist. Three of them. Cigar shaped, pods on the end of them, green glows on the top, shining headlights out the back of these pods, just like headlights in the fog of a car. I'm standing on top of the hill with my binoculars, looking for them to come back. People are passing me going, you saw it too. I'm going, yeah, I saw it too. What did you see? And I told them what I saw. I told Whiteman Air Force Base, they gave me your number. Who else has reported this? Am I nuts or what's going on out here? No, what time did you see it? God, I don't know. I, at about 9 o'clock. Okay. I don't know, man. I'm, I lost all track of time. I lost all track of anything like that. I mean, I was so... <laughs> I was so immersed in what was happening here. I, the last thing I was going to worry about was looking at a goddamn clock. But two people that stopped to talk to me, who live in the same area of the Ozarks that I do and live on the lake here with me, they stopped and they saw me standing on top of the hill in the dark, standing on top of my car with binoculars. They stopped and they go, you saw it too, didn't you? They rolled down the windows of the pickup truck and go, you saw it too. And I said, yeah, I saw it. And they go, what did you see? I said, three cigar-shaped aircraft hovering in a mist of fog. No noise. They said, that's exactly what we saw. We saw it cross over Highway 7. We pulled off our car, our truck, off the side of the road, shut off our motor, shut off our headlights, got out with our cameras. And you know what really bugged me about it? They told me they were unable to remove the lens caps off their camera. That was the only thing. Do you know those people? Yeah, I do know them personally. They're my neighbors. I don't know them personally. They're, we live in the Lake of the Ozarks where a lot of people are vacationers. They come down here only on the weekends during the summer. Lake of the Ozarks, I don't know. I don't know where you're from. Where are those 206 area codes? Washington. Okay. I don't, I don't know these people. I've never met them before personally. They are, they are full-timers here like we are. Okay. We're in an area. Lake of the Ozarks is 100 and 110 miles long, we got, we got 1,400 some odd miles of shoreline, it's the vacation capital of the Midwest. So a lot of people, they retire and they live down here, these was a retired couple. A lot of people, they're only down here on weekends during the warm months, okay? These people live down here. They stopped and got out and tried to photograph it, and the only thing that really bugged me out, what they said was, is for, they go, but we couldn't get the lenses off our camera. Why couldn't they? Now this really bugged me, because I'm going to tell you what, buddy, whatever these th three things were, and I'm not necessarily a believer in Jesus, and I ain't necessarily a believer in UFOs. But I'll tell you what, I saw three things as big as jet airliners hover 300 feet above my head atop the trees here in the woods around my house. And they hovered there without a sound in a cloud of mist, and as they stopped dead, the mist thinned out enough that I could see that there was windows going down the side of these things. You know what, it gave me the idea, like a carnival cruise or something, you know? And, and, and these things were looking at me. Out the windows, in all three crafts, I was like on display all of a sudden. Did you hear any sound? No sound. Not a sound. And none of us that saw it down here, and I've got quite a few witnesses, not necessarily just people that are in my household and my family around here, but other witnesses that all live in these houses around here, there's a bunch of us that saw it. And I called Whiteman, and they told me their, their phone was ringing off the wall. And they even accepted my collect call about it to hear what I had to say. I said, I, I said... I called and I said, hey, I said, I don't know if they know what's going on, but operator, I said, you tell them this is a collect call from a person who just had, although this sounds movie, a close encounter of the second kind. And they accepted my collect call and talked to me, transferred me to some big shot up there, Whiteman Air Force Base at the radar. Okay. And he goes, he goes, yeah, he says, our phone's ringing up the wall from Kansas City to Camdenton. Now, I live about, oh, 20 miles as, as the bird flies out of Camdenton. Okay, when these uh, craft took off, did the, did the mist reappear around them? It never left them. Okay. It was like continuously there. What color was that mist? Like fog. Like white, off, off yeah, white. Yeah, okay. gray white. Okay. It's, it's night, we have no moon. It was grayish white. Okay. But it like, when I'm standing outside in my driveway, looking out across the lake, something all of a sudden, I mean, it was really weird. It was like something told me, turn around. And my body all of a sudden reverts around as it does. I look up in the sky. And just like out of the movie, like uh, a polar guy or something, man. I mean, this isn't even this isn't even real. I don't know how I can even talk to you about this, but I got to talk to somebody. This cloud of, of of mist, steam, fog, whatever you want to call it, just comes rolling up over the tops of the trees, and it's so thick and so low that it's engulfing the top of the tree limbs. And I'm looking at it, and as I look at it, I see these three things that look like car headlights in a row. They're facing due west, but they're moving east. And I'm going, what the hell? There's, there's, a, what, what, there's no cars up there that can be doing that. And all of a sudden, they cease to move. And when they cease to move, the fog began to thin. Okay. As the fog thinned, you could see 
flashing lights. You could see the shape. You could see these craft. Now, I don't know what color they were, but they appeared in the dark sky at, at this time. And it was, and now, the reason I, I say I think they were dark green is because these lights shining out the back of them were so bright that they illuminated the mist, okay? The spark or whatever. Yes. The fog gave the appearance that these craft were a dark green color, but they could have been dark blue, they could have been dark anything. They weren't dark, they could have been, but they were a dark color. They were undoubtedly, by any shadow of a doubt, they were cigar shaped. There was no cockpit windows as cockpit windows would be in a jet as we know it. The only windows went down the side like an airliner's windows. And then there was pods on the back that really resembled pods that, that, that a jet engine would have on the back of like a 727 or something. Okay. And on top of them, there was a, a, a round circle of green glowing light, not real intensely bright, but glowing edible green. Obviously like some kind of a round dome shape projectile that sat on top of the made light. Now out of the back of these pods, now the pods were pointed on the front, and if the, the mist was enough, I can't describe the exact appearance of them, but they looked more or less like they were pointed on the front. I couldn't see a dark spot in the front of them like an air intake, as a jet engine as we know it. But the back of them was definitely flat as far as I could see because this beam of light came out that looked just like a headlight in the fog of an automobile. There was no tails on them. There was no wings. They made no noise. And whatever was on board was peeking out the windows like people looking out the windows of a bus. You know what I'm saying? Did you have a chance to count the number of those lighted openings? I, uh, well, there again, I I couldn't move my body. I couldn't even, I'm 20 feet from the from a plate glass window, a picture window, from where everybody was sitting here watching TV. I wasn't, for some reason, and this is what scares me the most, or what's got me upset the most, is I wasn't able to scream to anybody in the house. My body froze dead still. Okay. I wasn't able to move. As these things hovered there, dead still in the air, I couldn't move until they started to move away. When they started to move away, then all of a sudden I could move again. There was at least, to give you a minimum, 15, 20 is minimum. Okay. I'd say 30 is maximum. Windows down the side, directly resembling portal windows of a jet liner. But to be honest with you, I'm so upset from the situation, <laughs> I can't tell you if they were square or round. Okay. And the light was coming out of them so brightly that it would be hard to tell you if they were square or round. There was an incredible light coming out of the inside of the thing. But the light undoubtedly showed the fact that there was beings, creatures, whatever you want to term it, behind each and every window, looking out and pointing. So, I mean, there were several of them that were pointing at me. Like, like I was an exhibit at the zoo, an aquarium. And they stopped their dead, and, then the, and what really got me was the way they hovered into a stair-step position. The closest one moved up, the middle one moved down a little, and the one on the farthest front moved down even yet to where it damn near touched the treetops here. Now I'm talking, we're talking this craft was six feet over the trees, and its mist was covering, engulfing the trees on top of the hill above me. 200 feet, 300 feet above me. Okay. And they moved down in stair steps so that all three craft, I, I looked at all three rows of windows, then all three craft, and all, and I could see these occupants, whatever you want to turn them, term them, in all three windows, and all three sets of windows going down these crafts. And they were looking at me. They were staring at me. They were definitely, I don't know, you know, you read about these things in, 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 in the papers and, and, and stare. They were definitely humanoid looking. Okay. As far as I could see, they they, they had arms that they could point at me, like like you and I would point at something. Look at that ant on the ground. Uh, they had heads that were shaped like ours. As far as whether or not they had ears or they had hair, I have no idea. The light was too bright. But they undoubtedly had two eyes. You could see these areas that appeared dark. They appeared very dark where their eyes were. It was it was darker than it it was. Like, even though the light was so intensely bright, you could see that there was undoubtedly two eyes. I don't know how to explain it to you the way it looked, but you could see that, you know, there was undoubtedly two eyes on, your, on every head. And they were undoubtedly carrying on a conversation because the way their heads were pointing and looking at each other while they pointed, you know, you could tell these, these things were talking about the fact that I was standing down there on the ground. Okay. Any estimate of length on those objects? 
Of what? How long they were. Well, I'll tell you what. At a minimum, at a minimum, because I'm a traveling salesman. I've done a lot of flying. At a minimum, if you peel the wings and tail off a 747, you got it. Okay. I mean, I'm a 727. Okay. On a maximum, if you peel the wings and tail off a 747, you got it. But no hump, no cockpit windows, only windows going down the side. Okay. And these things, well, not only did me and a whole bunch of my neighbors see them, I apparently saw them the closest of all of us. But um, I understand from Whiteman, it's been reported from, at the time I talked to him, from Kansas City to Camdenton, which Kansas City is about 150 miles as the crow flies. No, about 120, 30 miles as the crow flies. Camdenton's about 20 miles as the crow flies. It's got thousands of reports on it. They even accepted my call collect. I couldn't believe it. All right, sir, could I get your name? Well, yeah. This is strictly confidential. My name is... Is that your first name? Yeah. Okay. How many other calls you got about this tonight? Oh, dozens. Now, which which uh, town were you at? Okay. Climax Springs, Missouri, just like it sounds. Climax Springs. I don't know where they ever got that name. But I'll tell you, I got several of my neighbors that saw the same thing I did. Three crafts in formation moving without any noise in a cloud of mist. And I'm going to tell you what. I have never in my life experienced anything like this tonight, but my whole attitude just got a, a, a total rearrangement tonight because I know I'm not nuts. I know what I saw. I'm, I was stone sober. And I don't do drugs or anything like that. <laughs> I'm a man with four kids. I know what I saw, and I know what my retired neighbors across the way saw, I know what my mother saw, I know what all the rest of us down here on this part of the lake saw. We all saw the same thing. Whatever this thing was, I'll guarantee you the Air Force don't have no machines like this. My brother in was in the Air Force big time, and <laughs> he sent me pictures of the SR-71 Blackbird before they were even supposed to exist. Okay. And, and Amer America don't have nothing like this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whatever this was, uh, it wasn't Russian or American. And to, to, so it leaves the mind up to have to decide what the hell it, it definitely was. But I'll guarantee you what, whatever these things were, they were large, they were silent. Why they were covered in mist, I don't know, but the cloud of mist moved along with them. You know what I'm saying? Right. It preceded them as they moved through the sky. The noses of these craft never broke this cloud of steam or mist, whatever you want to call it. It constantly preceded them. And... And, and, and as this thing moved through the sky, it made no noise, and it was each one of them was definitely loaded with multiple occupants that were staring out windows. They were looking out their windows, sightseeing, man. These things were sightseeing. Whatever they were, they were sightseeing. And they stopped so close to me to look at me, and I could see no seams. They were close enough that I could see no seams, no rivets, no plates on this craft. The skin of this vehicle was totally smooth. Totally smooth. And it was matte. There was no shine. It was it was flat textured. Okay. No shine. But whatever it was, man, I'm gonna tell you what, it was real bizarre. Definitely cigar shaped, but it had these two pods on the back that shine out lights like flashlight beams. And they were awful damn close to me. Awful damn close. It scared the shit out of me. Did you hear any or feel any increase of temperature in the air at the time? Not that I recognized, but that I I'm telling you what, I was so scared. I don't know if I'd have noticed it if there was. Okay. I was so scared, I don't know if I noticed it if there was. But I can tell you this, that they were close enough to me that the steam cloud that surrounded these crafts perpetually as they moved through the air covered the trees in my yard, covered the trees all over my hill. And that's no kidding. Because that third one, when it dropped down far enough for that its windows could look out at me too, it was virtually touching the tops of the treetops on top of my hill here. And I'm almost to the top of the hill. I'm about 50, 60 feet off the lake. And the top of the hill is probably 150 feet from me where it crest. Did you see any movement on the top of the tree at all? No. Okay. There was no movement of anything but these craft. But they were moving 
claw, my man. Okay. I'm telling you, these things did not move fast. They idled away, so to speak. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And when they came into view for me, they were like idling into view. And when they idled into view, like something to, like it was really bizarre. I mean, something, all of a sudden, for some reason, my body just turned around and looked up. And then I just saw this cloud of mist boil up, like right out of a movie or something. It didn't look real. And when it boiled up and moved over, then you saw these things move into view. And then they also moved into view. They stopped. And then when they stopped, the mist thinned. And then they moved into this stair-step position so that all three of them could look out the windows of all three of these crafts. And they stood there and stared at me. I don't know how long that was. I don't know whether they stared at me for 15 seconds or whether they stared at me for 15 minutes. Because the problem was, I walked, I had just loaded the fireplace with wood, I put on my coat, and I walked out to the bottom story of my house. Everybody else was upstairs. I walked out and went out into the driveway. So I don't know how long I was standing out there in the driveway with them staring at me. Because, but I do know that I was trying to yell and scream for everybody inside the house, and I was not able to. And I was not able to yell and scream until they got through with looking at me, so to speak, and started to move away. The minute, I mean the very instant, that those crafts started to move away and started initiating a forward movement again, then all of a sudden my body had moved. And that's when I ran right now and started screaming, God, everybody, come out here right now. I mean, I was screaming like a madman. Come out here, see this right now, because I thought I was nuts. I thought I'd lost my mind. I mean, I was freaking out. I said, come out here and look at this right now. And everybody, I was so hysterical that everybody ran out immediately, and they all saw him, too. And a whole bunch of people in our area did. And then that's when my brother and I went up on top of the hill. He got scared. He was so scared, he came back down the house. He wouldn't even wait up there with me. Okay, how many other people saw that? What's the total number? Well, in my family alone, ten. Okay. Because everybody's here this week. I mean, okay. I got four kids. My brother's got three. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a young, I'm not 20 years old, okay? What is your age? 34. Okay. But then I stood up on top of the hill with my binoculars, and I'm looking around the horizon, and this pickup truck drives up and sees me standing there, and they stop, they roll down the window, and the first thing they said to me was, you saw it too, didn't you? And I said, yeah. I saw something. What'd you see? And we go, oh, well, we don't know, what did you see? And they were, like, real apprehensive, you know? And I said, well, I said, I'm not sure what I saw. I said, but I saw something float through the sky. They said, so did we. They said, how many of them did you see? I said, I saw three. They said, so did we. I said, in a cloud of mist? They said, yeah. I said, where'd you see them? And then they opened up a little more after it was obvious that we had both agreed on what we had saw. And they said they were sitting down in Clim around Climax Springs, and they saw the crafts hover across seven. This is a retired couple now. They're both gray-haired. And they proceeded to tell me that they shut off their... They, when they saw them, they realized that something was strange with the crafts, the fact that the lights were shining the opposite direction, that the crafts were moving. But they stopped their truck, shut off the lights, put it in the park, shut off the motor, and got out. When they realized that they heard no engine noise, they tried to get their cameras. For some reason, and this is what the strangest thing that struck me about what they said was, they go, but we couldn't get our lens caps off the cameras. Now, that seems real strange. Now, I don't know whether they really got pictures or whether they really couldn't get their lens caps off the cameras. But, I really, but I'll tell you one thing, I really couldn't move out in the driveway, so I believe them in the sense, maybe I believe them in the sense that they couldn't get the lens caps off their cameras. Because I know as, as long as those things stood, for however long that was, they stood there and hovered away from me. I was not able to move or scream. I'm 20 feet from the plate glass windows of my house, where everybody's sitting in the living room watching TV. And if I'd have, if I'd have been able to scream, they could have heard me instantly. They'd have heard me yell. I mean, down here in this part of the country, it's so quiet. We've got no traffic. There's no road noise. There's no airplane noise. I mean, it's dead silent. If somebody screams a half mile away, you can hear them. And I, I couldn't scream. These people couldn't get the lenses off their camera. Do you see them quite often? I've never seen them before in my life. They live on Kaufman Bend 11. Now, let me explain to you what that means. The, the, uh, on every cove of the lake, one side of the cove will be Kaufman Bend 2. The next side of the cove is Kaufman Bend 3. Okay? Okay. And you have lots and lots and lots of coves. Get out your map of Missouri. Look up Lake of the Ozarks. It's in central Missouri, just west of Jefferson City, just south of Sedalia and Columbia, just north of Springfield, Lake okay. of the Ozarks. And you'll, you'll, you'll get the picture. Although the map will not show you how many coves the lake actually has. Because the lakes are like 110 miles long, but we've got 1,456 miles of shoreline. That tells you we've got a lot of coves. So the map doesn't 
the tow off the coast. Now, in our area, it was Coffin Bend. And the first cove is Coffin Bend 1, the other side of the cove, the north side of the cove is Coffin Bend 2. Then the next cove you come to, the south side of the cove is Coffin Bend 3, the north side of the cove is Coffin Bend 4. Savvy? Right. Well, I'm Coffin Bend 7, these, are called, these people live on Coffin Bend 11. Okay. So they live just, you know, they live four coves or so up from me, whatever the case may be. But they, uh, they definitely stopped and, and tried to photograph it, but uh, they tell me they weren't able to. Now, I don't know whether they were just telling me that because they really weren't able to, but they tell me they couldn't get the lenses. They said they were not able to remove the lenses from their cameras. And I know that I wasn't able to yell to my family inside the house until the crash started to move away. And the minute they started to move away, I, my body could move again. And, man, the first thing I did was run in the house and start screaming, God, everybody, get out of here now and look at this. And I, I brought all the four adults out there and, of course, one of the children is way too young, but the other six of the children all saw it too. In fact, uh, the children that ranged in ages from six to ten were so scared I had to uh, really give some rationalized uh, counsels for what it meant. Okay. These are children that go to church. They they don't understand what UFOs are about. Me myself, I don't go to church, but my mother and the rest of my rural religious they go to church every weekend, Sabbath school. They know, you know, their comprehension is. Is Jesus was born 2,000 years ago, and, and we're the, you know, they don't, right. they don't grasp things like the fact that somebody else may live on the planet that makes us look ignorant. And I'm going to tell you what, after tonight, I believe it wholeheartedly that somebody's somewhere out there, because I'm going to tell you what, whatever these things were, I know I don't have hallucinations. I know I don't have hallucinations. I know what I saw, and, and even if I did have hallucinations, all my neighbors don't have the same exact hallucination. Right. Not all my neighbors. Right. Some of my neighbors don't have the same exact hallucination. My brother, my girlfriend, my mother, my sister-in-law, and my kids aren't going to have the same hallucination. I got four kids. They all saw it. And, it, I mean, it shook them up big time. They don't, uh, you know, they, they don't comprehend stuff like that. When they see something like that, they think of the day of the earth, day of the earth stood still or something, you know? Okay. Well, thanks very much for calling, and if we get any follow-up on this, we'll get back to you. All right. I'd be really interested to know about the, just what the hell it was. I'd be interested to know who else in my area saw it. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you again. Bye.